The video shows a man screaming as he's bitten by a St. Paul police canine and then kicked by an officer. Two officers are currently suspended. One is the subject of an internal investigation. The St. Paul Police Chief Todd Axtell says he apologized to that man whose name is Frank Baker. Yes, the chief says he's disappointed and upset by what he saw in that video, and there's a lot to get into with this story. Chris Rapsky is here. You took a look at this for us this afternoon, Chris. Yeah, let's start with what the canine officer, the first one to make contact with the suspect, saw. In the police report, he says Baker matched the description of a suspect with a gun. The officer says Baker stepped out of his vehicle but refused to comply to commands to put both hands up. Now, here's the video. If we keep going a little bit, you're going to see the officer kick the man on the ground a few times. We have a few questions here. Why is this canine attacking the man for 71 seconds with five officers standing around watching? Why did one of those officers kick the man being mauled by the dog? three times. And finally, how do the officers expect a man being bitten by a dog to remain still on the ground as ordered? Fair questions. St. Paul Police Chief Todd Axtell says he was dismayed by the video and here's his response. I'm disappointed and upset by what the video shows. As a person who deeply cares about this community in our department, I'm profoundly saddened. This simply isn't the St. Paul way. We do have great cops. They work hard to do the right thing every day in this city. I don't want this incident to tarnish the great work that our public servants do every day throughout our city. So we now know that two of the six officers involved in the incident are being disciplined. Officer Brian Ficcadenti, who is the canine officer, is facing a 30-day unpaid suspension. And Officer Brett Palkowsiewicz, who police say delivered the kicks, is on unpaid leave as of yesterday. The police union also commented on the situation, urging the community not to rush to judgment. The Federation and the officers involved in this case re regret that he was injured, certainly. However, from our perspective, those injuries would not have occurred had he not made the decisions that so many seem to be making lately. Specifically, the following police directives is for some reason optional. But the chief feels quite a bit differently, at least about one of the officer's actions. We obtained a settlement letter from the chief to Officer Ficcadenti, the canine officer, that precisely explains what he did wrong in the chief's eyes. So we're going to read some of these to you. He says, quote, the decisions and conclusions you made are troubling. You responded to anonymous information about a fight and man with a gun. No witness ever identified the citizen or his vehicle as being involved to you or any other officer. And he was three apartment buildings away from the original call location. He goes on to say the citizen was in his car speaking on a cell phone when you ordered him to exit his car. The citizen did in fact exit his car as instructed. According to your report and statement, the citizen was never seen with a gun, nor did he display, nor did he display any aggression towards you. The entire interaction from when you gave the first verbal command until releasing your canine partner was less than 20 seconds. He goes on to say, after you released your canine partner, he made contact with the citizen and bit the citizen's lower leg. The canine was off lead and not in your control. The canine was on the citizen's leg for approximately 70 seconds. You failed to control your canine partner, which resulted in serious injury and permanent disfiguration of the citizen's leg. Officers were supporting you and ready to act for nearly the entire time the canine was biting the citizen. You did not utilize these resources even after being informed by other officers that they were ready to assist." End quote. And uh, Chief, Ficadenti, Chief said that uh, Ficadenti violated seven department policies. A civilian review commission recommended the chief order a 10-day suspension. The chief said he considered firing the officer, but instead decided to give him a 30-day suspension. So he went above the recommendation. As for the other officer, Palkowicz, uh, it's unclear. There's still an open investigation on him. So the police and the chief, they're not commenting on that part. He was the one who allegedly kicked the man on the ground. All right, we've heard a lot from St. Paul Police Department. What about the NAACP? What are they saying about all this? Let's take a look. You have to switch this culture around, this police culture around, <clears throat> that that type of activity is permitted by other officers. Someone's got to stand up for the innocent. Someone's got to stand up for the person who is unjustly being confronted by the police. 
The only question I have at the end of this, those investigations by St. Paul, they're all internal investigations by the police department? Correct. Okay. And that's just where this case goes from here? Right. Um, I mean, who knows what happens next with the officer who allegedly kicked the man on the ground? Right. And right. They're part of a union. And so there could be grievances, things like that. We don't know what the discipline recommended is at that point. They're not talking about it. They can't. State law says they can't. Oh, okay. Thanks, Chris. A lot yeah. to go through. Appreciate yeah. it.